Okay, uh, no goof around. We're just gonna get into this proper because I've got a lot to cover and it's not on a whole lot, so let's just do this. If I'm not a lazy douchebag, on the screen right now is an excerpt from some website. I can't remember which it was, but it was what I talked about last time. And the basically it was talking about how they spent all their money on voice actors and writers. Um, this is a lie, if it is. Um, and if it's not, then crooks have stolen money from this company. Because... Uh, stuff has changed. I don't know what happened in episode 4, but it feels like a completely new writing team has been put into place for episode 4. I don't know why, but whatever. We'll talk. We're gonna go talk about it. Um, but, the voice acting thing, one person, I, I, I'm not even gonna get into that. I don't care. But, it's it's such a problematic thing, the writing in this thing. Um, like, uh, whatever. Let's just get into it. Okay, so the first 20 minutes before we actually have to deal with the question of whether we kill or not kill Chloe, which... That's dumb. I knew it was dumb, but whatever. Um, first 20 minutes, I really liked it. I, it really rejuvenated my, you know, my love for it. Because it's like, I haven't... I mean, I have played some pretty good visual novel games in the meantime. But outside of the few games that I played, I haven't played as something with a really good written story, and it felt like this was still, this was continuing on this this thing. Because like I said, the first three episodes had writing problems, a lot of writing problems, but I wasn't, I didn't hate it. Episode four is the complete opposite. Episode four is is that one thing that just 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 demolishes everything, all of the goodwill that was built so far, um, and it's really depressing for me because it's like. I mean, I can, a plot hole where a gun doesn't have, you know, six bullets in it when it should have had, you know, when a gun had four rounds in it instead of six, you know what, I mean, that's, I mean, it's stupid, I, it's no, it's incredibly easy to notice it, so, you know, whatever, but at least it doesn't, like, destroy the narrative, and, you know, the fake drama crap that was with the, you know, the fake drama crap that was with, um, Katie, you know, that, I mean, it was at least established, but it wasn't established well in the whole n not being able to use your power thing, kind of, like, again, w was brought up in the second episode and then disappeared for the rest. It's nowhere else to be seen, so at least that's good. But it, it, fake drama crap, I at least get because, one, a lot of people do fake drama crap. A lot of things that a lot of people really, really like do fake drama crap. So at least I get it, you know? At least from a consumer, like, as a, making a product for consumers, I get it. Fake drama crap, whatever. That that's something I like to call the Clonot effect, which actually the Katie thing didn't really get into the Clonot effect, um, but it does get into the Clonot effect. I Clonot the anime, but we'll talk. I'm probably gonna put up a video about that sometime, but we'll talk about that later when we get to it. Um, but at least like that all seemed kind of it all like fit at least. I was like, okay, it was there, you know. She was picked on the entire thing. You could kind of see this thing coming for a while. So, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was written as well as I would like it to, but at least it was there, and at least it was still enjoyable in some aspect. Episode 4 is not... Um, I'll have to actually disagree with that for just a second, because, uh, and though it has a lot of problems, we'll talk about it, uh, the ending actually rejuvenated my desire to play the game. Um, basically, I, had, I was stuck on the Accept or Refuse page for, like, two days, like, two entire days where I wouldn't play the game, like, even longer than that, I think it was, like, four days, where I just wouldn't play the game anymore because I didn't want to. Like, why would I want to make that choice when the alternate reality, the alternate na narrative that's in my head that I was working through because of that terrible choice was significantly better, infinitely better. But whatever, let's pull it back, let's pull it back. Um, but no, it's like, but now, yeah, the ending, the ending to this episode actually rejuvenated my desire We'll talk about it later because it has its problems. So even the best aspect of this episode has its flaws. Like like I said, the first. So we'll talk about it. But the first twenty minutes, I think I don't know before before we hit that choice before Chloe started talking about how she wants to kill herself. Even during that, it's the choice that really upset me. But like that first time, like you, when you're dealing with the consequences of your actions and all that fun jazz, it was so fun. I loved it. I loved the dialogue because Chloe was so. I mean, she was even more of a prick, but you kind of got it because it was kind of coming from a place where she couldn't do much but, you know, thank and belittle people and all that fun jazz. So, I mean, I, I'd, I'd argue it actually worked. It worked incredibly well. 
And then we hit that scene, and you know, that scene I did a whole 40 minute video about last time. Yeah, so uh, that didn't happen. Um, we didn't change time. We didn't alter time. Uh, we did nothing. We, she didn't, like, the one thing I wanted the most out of that scene, the one thing I was so hoping to get because of this alternate thing was the second time around we had to prove to Chloe that we had time travel powers. But that didn't happen because it was there for melodramatic effect or something. I don't know. I really... This is the most bothersome thing because I got so upset about it. I put up a 40-minute video talking about this problem. And then, out of nowhere, it comes and it goes. Like, immediately after you choose. Because either, either way, I don't know. I'm not sure how the um, kill her choice was because I didn't want to kill her. Because guess what? We could have fixed the situation. You're not putting her out of her misery. She doesn't exist. She's in an alternate dimension that does not exist if Max does not do what she does. So either way, so either you kill her and she's like, because she, she, it does the same thing. They saved money on this, and they saved money on this, which is, I hate that. If you're going to do a thing about choice, you better do it hard. You know, you better go at it hard. She, so she's laying in bed, she kind of puts her head, like, I'm not going to, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You won't kill me. And that's the choice that I chose. So I'm assuming that when you kill her, you turn the knob up. And she, she says, thank you, oh, and then she puts her heads over the side and she dies. And then you look at the photo the same way. So, um, so instead of, you know, exploring, there's so much that was missed. And this is why I keep, I keep bringing up um, the girl who left through time, because I was expecting that. Because it harps off the girl who left through time all the time throughout this series. And I, and I was like, okay, cool. I mean, it was kind of messing with me, because I was like, I already have the girl who left through time. I've already experienced that. I already liked it. What we are not experienced, what are we not? I mean, you need to do something different, and then... But, like, this would have benefited so much more if it went down that road, where... Because, like, if you don't know about the girl who left her time, the whole thing of it is the fact that by continually trying to make everything perfect and make everything happy, she ruins everything. She literally destroys everything, and by some mild graces, by some slim sliver of hope, she ends up saving... Like, like, by some sliver, some thing, like, she ends up having the chance to redeem herself, and then she doesn't even, she basically just sits there, and it's like this small, like, she gained this small bit of leverage, essentially. She went from, well, she could have died, to, like, like she she ruined basically everything, and then she comes back, and it's just like, she all she did was she just progressed a little, like, the only thing that she changed was, well, outside of essentially quote unquote killing even though he had to go back to time but like basically ending his relationship with her relationship with um basically her love interest can't remember their names um but like outside of that the only thing that happened was that she won she gained um she gave basically she gained a mission in life which was to protect this painting and then she also she learned the folly of her indecision you know not, i guess not indecision but the folly of her indecisiveness and or unwilling to accept problems and stuff like that but like she basically she just learned like she didn't get anything out of it other than she basically learned to not be such a selfish brat you know um but but like that's it why didn't we experience this why didn't we experience this in um why didn't we experience this in life is strange episode four like basically like it was that like it seemed like the whole it, which, what should have happened was most of episode four should have been her trying to continually fix problems and then keep messing them up and then learning the lesson of that bad things happen in life and you've got to deal with it. You know, that's kind of a global law that we all have to abide by. Bad things are going to happen in life unless we do something. Like, unless we do something extreme about it, like unify the entire world under one disgustingly iron-fisted rule and then they force a system of morality on all of us. If that, That's the only way that happens, you know? Unless you murder and kill everyone, you can't stop people from murdering and killing each other. It's just... whatever. Um, but that's why I was expecting that. Because there, was, because there were alterations. That's why they established alterations. And like I told you about the letters, like, she sent letters throughout, throughout her childhood. Um, and it was just, it was so weird. I just couldn't believe that. And like, like, you you should recognize the fact that you that you changed, you altered the timeline. Like, like not even like alter the timeline as in she's now crippled because of you, but she has her dad and all that. But like, she remembered things and then altered the timeline through them. 
you know, like the butterfly effect or whatever, however time travel you can say. I just call it the butterfly effect because that's what the, the movie that probably made that theory famous, you know, from a, I guess, I guess there's, there's got to be written aspects of that first, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say the Ashton Kutcher movie kind of pushed that into the mass consciousness a lot more than the books do, because that's what happens. Books don't do a lot. Books don't have that big of an influence in the world. Any, anymore, let's say that. I'm not being... Like, I love reading, so don't get that way. Um, but that's what I was expecting. I was expecting to get all these minor changes and stuff, and maybe find this, or even just her kind of dealing with it and, you know, having to fight it and just learning, like, like learning from her experiences. Uh, but no, like, basically, right after you... Like, essentially, you spend a night in this alternate timeline, and then you're done. Like, you're just done with that. Like, there's, no, there's nothing there. You either kill her or you don't kill her, which, it, either way, it's incredibly irrelevant because you destroy that timeline by going back and unfixing the timeline, or unmodifying, I guess. And it's... Oh, it was such a sad thing to see, but whatever. Alright, then, so you and Chloe are back to being good friends because Chloe's an emotional wreck who's all over the place, so of course she'd calm down that quickly, and then you start investigating things. There's a lot of problems with this. Um, I did post the video about uh, it's a truck, because it was a truck, and it's retarded that it was in fact a truck. Because uh, you can't, like, she said SUV, then change pictures, or change the line, you don't spend all your money on voice acting, and then don't change that stuff, or whatever. But there's a bunch of different events, and I wish, I'm hoping I can remember all these, because I've been kind of darting back and forth on these and how much they make me angry, and basically I'm, I'm settling on the fact that though the ending has problems, I do enjoy it, so I've been thinking about that a lot, and I've been thinking about what the ending is going to be, and I'm going to hedge my bets that it's some kind of, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm seriously hedging my bets that the, that the, the town itself, like the actual landmass, like maybe even Earth itself, like Gaia, or anything like that, has the physically given its powers to her, so, you know, Deus Ex Machina, or whatever Earth is, Geo Ex Machina, and, um, and not Latin and Greek. Because that's Greek, fellas. If you don't know what Deus Ex Machina comes from, it's a Greek uh, narrative pl uh, plot device. Yeah, it's a Greek plot device where God would literally come down in a play and do something, or one of their gods would come down and do something. But, all right, so whatever. Irrelevant. Um... So, basically, we're back in the real world, and Chloe, and, like, she's all happy. He's like, oh, and, like, and then I love the fact that Chloe hints at the fact that she had been messing with time and that she was aware, like, that I really wish they would go into that a bit more. Like, people, like, you should be able to, like, unless you're a cool, calm-headed, and very calculated human being who's manipulating time, you're gonna get caught. You know, people are, yeah, most people are probably too stupid to kind of piece together that. But I think there's quite a few of us that would be, hey, you're acting kind of strange, and I know you have time travel powers. Guess what? Uh, you manipulated time. You want to talk about it? Oh, no? Okay, that's cool. You know, whatever. But it was just, I, I like the fact that Chloe did actually give a nod to it that she that she had actually manipulated time, but whatever. That's fun. That's all fun and good. Uh, so, what's the first thing they did? Because like, we had all that stuff ready. Oh yeah, we needed to get three things. That's what. That's what. That's that. That's it. Um, yeah. And once we get back from the pointless butterfly effect thing, which again is something they establish and then get rid of within a single episode, which maybe, maybe they don't. Maybe they bring it back in chapter five, but they sure did. Her physical ailments because of the time travel sure did come and go, but whatever. But we needed to do three things. We needed to get. Uh, Nathan's crap. We needed to get. Uh, we needed to get Nathan's crap. We needed to get Frank's uh, cipher code, which is stupid. Basically, Frank coded all of his uh, log books with names of people. So, Katie had a name, which that surprised me. That was one of the things where it's like, that really did surprise me that Katie was drug doing, especially with her whole, you know, severe Christian faith, but whatever, I don't know, doesn't matter. It was just something that I was kind of bothered with, but whatever. Um, you know, everyone's doing drugs, everyone, and everyone buys them all from Frank for some reason, even, even though that kind of brings up a thing. If you're rich, don't you have a better source of getting 
high-end consumer drugs than the local drug dealer. That's also with the ending, too. I th maybe... I, I can't remember if I remember seeing it in the list that um, the professor had bought those drugs off of Frank, but if you're not retarded, you would have not... I mean, if you were not a retarded human being, you would have bought those drugs from someone other than Frank. You know? Yeah. You're, you're a serial killer slash rapist who buries bodies, you know, drugs them, potentially rapes them, photographs their body and buries them. You ought to have a pretty good system other than a random guy who is mentally disturbed and is easily killed by little kids. Yes, um, but whatever. So we had to go get Frank, and I can't remember. There's a third one, which is... Oh, yeah, we had to go get, um, that, that's the first thing you have to do, is you have to go snooping through, uh, whatchamacallit's, uh, stuff. You have to go snooping through his stuff, and you have to find, um, a list of, like, a bunch of crap that, like, tells people where, like, I can't remember his name, but it was Chloe's stepdad, who was, like, surveillancing all these people, which turns out, guess what? He was a good guy. He was trying to find who was killing all these people in this town. Huh, why wouldn't he just say that? Huh? Why wouldn't he just say that? Cause you know it kind of ended his it ended his marriage. Hmm. But whatever. You know, I mean, there's a different point when like when Max is just snooping around, you know. But like when when you're at the point where I'm sitting, like when my Max, the character that I'm controlling, is sitting there, bad mouthing you and talking about how you're following students. Like that's at the that's the point when you talk to your. When you, when you talk to your wife and you talk to the kids and say, I'm trying to find out what is ha why are people disappearing in this town. That's all you had to say, really. I mean, you're doing it through questionable means, but you're trying to save people. And you can't go through legally because guess what? The bad people who are pri probably involved in the murders are the people who own the town and pay. In all likelihood, if, it, if they're not paying the police officers... They are definitely helping the police officers get the money that they need. So, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we have to go into um, whatever. Chloe's stepdads get his information. So, we do that. We go to Frank's. And this is this is the one thing that kind of, it bothered me a lot. Because it was just, it was such an easy thing. It was such an easy concept that has been drilled into us in the last four episodes. It has been drilled into us. If you, every time you rewind, you keep crap in your inventory. That is, like, the core game mechanic that is drilled into us this entire time. So, basically, I, from a game mechanic standpoint, the Frank scene doesn't... It works. It doesn't bother me at all. But from a, a universal narrative standpoint to where, like, it, this is inside the game. Because the first thing that happens... I don't know if it happened for everyone, but... Because I always... I, was, I picked the sarcastic one because I just wanted to see what was going to happen. To where I said... I basically said um, that you gave me my car... Like, something like that. You, do you expect me to give you your car keys? And, like, and I said, you already did because technically you already did because I took it. And rewound time, and he gave me your car keys, and I wanted to see what happens. So Chloe shoots the dog and uh, and Frank. Yeah, um, yeah, and so Chloe was sitting there panicking and stuff, and it's just it, it's at it's at that point. This is far along enough in the narrative for us to understand and know that we do in fact manipulate time. Now, I know this might be a concept that's harder for Chloe to grasp, but I don't think so. I think Chloe grasps it. Grasps it. I think Chloe grasps a lot more than Max grasps it. Grasps it. And Chloe's on board with it a lot more. But at this point in the narrative, like, we should not be killing... Like, like we should not be upset about killing someone. Because it's only a hop, jump, and a skip away from it not existing. What are we there for? We are there to get the cipher for some... Which, why is that even there? Why does a drug dealer as low-key and as basically poor and low-end have a cipher? Like, like a logbook, sure, but people who buy it... Like, if you ha like, maybe you have a book for who, who owes you money, because at one point it was like, Chloe owed him, like, $3,000 for one drug deal. So I was like, I mean, I get that. Like, have a list so that you know who owes you money, but, like, when someone's coming, giving you 50 bucks for some weed, you, 
do you really need to know who's getting that lead? Like, is is there some kind of like larger meta structure for this? Like, maybe the Prestons are like keeping, like keeping Frank on the payroll, and they they want to know who's buying drugs from him and all that stupid. I don't know. Maybe there's something like that, but that just seems not likely. When when someone comes up to you and buys you a, an ounce of weed, you don't care. I mean, you really don't care. They hand you money, you hand them product. And you might have a long, you might have a book that says how much crap you have on you, like you know you have 50 ounces of this weed and you got that many ounces of that cocaine and that much of meth and all that. Like you might have that dot like out, but you would not have it log booked like that. But whatever, it happens. Uh, whatever. But he needs a cipher for this stuff, so I don't. Why? Why would you give everyone code names? But whatever. At, at least I, it's a thing. It happens for some reason. This happens, but whatever. You think we would have uh look through the logbook a little bit before we left, but okay. And we would have noticed that. Uh Bulldog and Rut uh would have uh kinda of set off the fact that maybe these are encoded a bit, but whatever. We need to get the decipher. We need to decipher it all. Um, uh, but whatever. So and so when basically the first option that I got, because I was being sarcastic and snarky, Chloe ended up shooting him and the dog. And Basically, both of them sat there panicking a bit. Like, at, you, you need to gain at least some arrogance. Like, maybe the most humblest person in the world gains time travel. That's, you know, I can kind of see that. But Chloe and, in fact, Max are not the humblest people in the world. And they would have at least gained some arrogance by this. And, like, maybe not be the most arrogant douchebags in the world, even though I literally just told the guy... That, that with time travel, I mean, he didn't. I mean, he, we didn't say it literally, but we did say the fact that you have already given me your keys. Like that's arrogant already. But we should have at least a little arrogance to the point where this stuff doesn't affect us anymore because we know we have a buffer. All right, so they're both dead. We're patting them down. We need to get this stuff. We're patting them down. Since Max and then Max is actually kind of being a bit on the positive side here, but they're patting them down. They pull off. And they pull out the, the the thing, and we have it. So instead of the logical thing, which is, hand, because Chloe has to know this by now that that's one of her abilities is to manipulate time like that. Because guess what? She got in through the door. Uh, like like, there has to be some discussion between these two that she can hold on to items. You know, like how do you how do you do that? Like, like that should have been one of the things where, that should have been like one of the tests too. It's like where you would take her keys or something like that, and you would rewind time. And then you have her key. You have the keys when she like like when she first walks in. Like there, I proved I have time travel. But whatever. Um. All right, all right. But uh, yeah. So instead of doing the logical thing, which is, uh, which is hand Max the, the whatever the piece of paper that we need to get, hand Max the piece of paper. Um. We decide that Chloe's going to hold on to the piece of paper and we're going to run back to the car after we just murdered two dudes. Yeah, so instead of, you know, just Max going, hand me the piece of paper, she hands me the piece of paper, we wind back to a point where we don't even see. We don't even see, Frank, which, uh, guess what? That's what happened the last time we stole something from Frank, so why aren't we doing that again? Like, <sighs> We had to get to go through it again, and of course you can do it to where you can have it so that way no one gets hurt. I personally stopped at the point where I shot him in the leg because Frank's kind of a dick, and uh, the characters are kind of stupid. That's what, I don't know. I've never considered them to be that dumb in the first three episodes, and if they were, I guess they could have been considered that dumb. But at the same time, they were not informed. Like he, they didn't have the information they need. So at least it made sense in the first three episodes that they weren't going around investigating things like an intelligent human being would because they just didn't know. They were just basically at grasping at straws trying to find stuff. At this point, um, we have the log. But we should, they should have just went and mentioned. Maybe they do mention um, Rachel in the alternate in the alternate ending. But it's like I don't know what it is. That's what episode four is just basically a mixture of everyone being dumber than they've ever been before but whatever um so yeah so instead of at, instead of just give, saying hey we need to find Rachel we're trying to find Rachel we know you had a relationship with her just give us the information we need and we'll try to bring Rachel back as quickly as we can 
no, we you know, we have to do all that other crap and manipulation, but whatever. But it works mechanically. It's just it's one of those things I noticed and it was kind of stupid. It also noticed after that, um, like when you get done with all the investigating stuff and you find the barn, that also bothered me. Which logically, I guess I should have seen it coming because, of course, we used the rewind thing a bunch. We've used the rewind thing a bunch to solve puzzles and stuff, but like at that point, wouldn't it have been just easier to untie, like unloosen the rope? Because I'm talking about in the barn, where you have to tie them, where you have to basically push the motor down, climb up, rewind the time to the motor, and then attach the rope to the motor, and then push the motor down again. Well, why couldn't we have just unraveled it a bit, just tied it to the motor where it was, and just push it down? It would have done the same thing. Like, I could have, I could have just grabbed onto the rope and yanked on it, and it would have probably broken the lock. Maybe, maybe not. It's a, supposedly it's a pretty heavy door, but whatever. But, like, there's a ways around this, like, but... Again, it should. I guess I should have seen that coming, but it was just like the logical alternative to that was just to, you know, tie the rope. It's like not. It's not even that far away. Just loosen, loosen the rope a bit, tie it down, and push it. It would have done the same thing. So, oh yeah, and then no, yeah, I think I think someone I was having a conversation with um, had a problem with. Nah, never mind. It don't matter. So the barn thing. We basically find out, and this is where I guess they were kind of establishing the fact that the professor at the end of the at the end of the episode was the bad guy who was actually doing the raping and photographing, photographing the the photography of it of uh, the the kidnapped victims. But this uh, this kind of comes off like iffy for me. Again, we'll talk about the ending a bit more later. Uh, but like for this, it's like. This is basically the only foreshadowing we've had so far. Maybe, maybe there was other ones. Maybe I'm not wasn't paying attention enough to close enough to the, some of the details. But uh, yeah. But um, yeah. But like this is the only time that um, it's foreshadowed that the professor could have been, in fact, the killer. And it's only and it's only that because there's professional photography equipment here. Um. And I can't remember exactly because I really don't didn't care of Nathan at all, other than the fact that he's a psychopath. But maybe Nathan isn't a photography student, but he, I don't know. I I don't I don't know exactly what it is. But we, even if it didn't, even if he isn't, he still has photography equipment, and that's probably because he's rich, you know. So maybe it's. I mean, it might not be obvious. It might be obvious. I don't know. But it's just. Having a rich kid have a nice photography setup, even if he's not a photography major, is like kind of a thing that happens. Like when you're rich, you have stuff that you have wasteful stuff. You know, I mean, I don't have photography equipment. I guess oh, that's a lie. I do have, I have two kick, I have two, I have zero cameras, but two, two tripods. So I don't know. But for the most part, people and like wealth gives you the ability to have excess. And like apparently, he had like a six thousand dollar from what we were shown. It looked like just a standard SLI, SLI, SLR, single reflective lens. Yeah, I think it's an SLR. I'm not. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not a photography major. Um, but it looked like he just had like a, a simple SLR. Maybe it was a pretty nice camera. I don't know. Frankly, I don't even care. Um, but he. Apparently, but what was told to us was the fact that he had a six thousand dollar camera and like a thousand dollar lens. So I'm going to have to assume that like that was kind of the precursor. Like we saw, we we went to investigate Nathan's crap. I saw that ahead of time. Like we, we saw it. We were given this information ahead of time. So it, that adds to Nathan being the bad guy. And even if Nathan isn't the one who's personally murdering all these girls and all this stuff, he is directly involved. We know this because he's been there. He's involved with it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. But what, it, does, it doesn't even matter. Uh, but like that, that's basically this is the only foreshadowing we've seen so far. And um, so this is a very... This leads up to a bit of a scene, but like they op- basically find the cabinet that was shown, I think, at the end of episode two, where someone was like messing with a bunch of three ring binders with women's names on them. And Katie was one. The one before that was Rebecca. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I remember the next one being Max, and not the next one being Victoria. But it, that doesn't matter. A serial rapist could change his mind, you know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but but we've seen these binders before, and so basically we take out three of them, which um, it was Katie, Rachel, and some other girl before that, and they were flipping through them, and they were kind of seeing this. So rather than taking a few of the binders with them 
and actually holding on to them so that way they would have some evidence, they kind of leave it behind because Chloe noticed the fact that Rachel was buried alive. I'm thinking buried alive. Her body was buried. Let's just go with that. And so we irrationally get out of there. So we should have pulled those out, but... Um, and then we go and we find Rachel's dead. So, there, yes, yeah, an emotional scene, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, that. So basically we've decided at this point that we're going to kill Nathan. So, you know, cool, whatever. Uh, kind of has it coming. What happens after that is dumb, because Chloe... I, mean, I get... I know that Chloe's emotional, but, like, you don't warn, like... Unless you are the most overconfident and most capable person ever, you do not warn the person you're going to kill that you're going to kill them. And if you do, you do it in a manner that, like, the warning then gives you the opportunity to kill them. Like, you text, even though we have his phone, so why is he texting? Like, he should have been, ex like, when he got, eh, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter. But you text him when we find him. You text him, we know you killed Rachel and you're going to die now. And then when he's looking at his phone, you shoot him in the back of the head, you stab him, you break his neck, you, like, I guess you hit him with a drug and then you torture him, throw him in a bath of acid, throw him feet first into a meat grinder. You, you do that, you don't tell him, because apparently Chloe must have texted, Chloe must have texted, um... Nathan, while she was at the Vortex party, or even before the Vortex party, which is retarded. You do not... It doesn't matter, unless you're... Chloe is not the most capable person in the world. Max, even with her time travel abilities, is not capable of anything. Neither of them are. The only thing she has is a gun, and she barely sh She could barely kill Frank with it. And she got killed pretty quickly at the end of um, episode 4. And it's like, and I know so many people, like, I thought, I was looking at discussion to see when the next episode was going to come out, because I'm like, I'm tired of waiting, because that was like a three-month wait, and it shouldn't have been a three-month wait. Um, but, I was looking at discussion, and some guy was um, talking about how he was wondering why everyone was so upset with Chloe when Chloe died, because he hated her as a character. Well, I didn't hate her as a character, I actually loved her as a character, but the problem was, I didn't feel anything when she died. One, because how absolutely contrived the scene was. Like, it's it, it's physically impossible that scene went down the way it was without certain things going on. But whatever. Um, but in the end, like, you can't feel sorry for Chloe when she actively ruined her own ability to murder people. Like, you want revenge? Then get revenge. But you've got to do it with a clear head. Like, it's too late. Rachel's dead. You, if you want to get revenge and you want to kill Nathan, you've got to do it in a manner that well, doesn't tell Nathan that he is, you know, capable of, like, running, like, don't let him escape. Don't let him plan. Nathan has a gun. Oh, he used to have a gun, I guess. He lost his, but I'm sure he, he could have another gun. I don't know. I don't know, man. But... <sighs> Uh, see, I can't remember, because at the Vortex party, that was kind of dumb. I expected more from that. That's not even my handwriting. And then we warned Victoria, and I... Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. when Because it made me so angry when we went, we warned Victoria. Because, of course, since I was nice to her, she believed me. But... Oh, man. She was nice, so she... We, I was nice to her, so she believed me. But, like, there was one line in it that really hurt me. It was the fact that... Because Victoria, uh, Victoria asked... Victoria asked, why would Nathan do this? And then Max says she doesn't know. You found... Like, a row of 20 to 30 binders. Three ring binders. Filled with images and pictures... Of women being drugged... Potentially raped, depending on how you want to do with it. Because I'm pretty sure Katie was raped. But I'm thinking what happened was Katie actually got raped by Nathan. And maybe he got involved with it. Or the other ones were just the professor. who I don't, I'm just speculating on that, but whatever. But you found all of these binders for all of these women. And all of them are, you know, people that got, you know, are either... That, th this thing happened a bunch and I know we don't know that's the professor yet. This is a surprise thing to us. But to sit there and say, I don't know. No. 
But how I would have written that would have been completely different. I would have been screaming at Victoria the entire time, telling her, no, you shut up, you listen to me. We just found, like, a bunch of binders. Like, maybe even rip some pictures out of it or anything like that. We just found a bunch of binders. No, get off me. We just found a bunch of binders filled to the brim with these pictures of women in, if not horrifyingly illegal like completely disgusting things and th- and then at least the Rachel one showed her being buried alive so we can assume that we know that it was to either rape them it was some kind of sick mental condition where she he- the person wanted to rape them wanted to kill them wanted to drug them and photographer them and photographer them and drug them and take pictures of them or just a assortment of things but it's all basic sense just tell her that that's what they did we found it. We found the stockhold of all this crap. And I seriously, I don't like. I would have destroyed. I don't care how much of a rush we were in to save Rachel. I would have destroyed that place. I would have at least taken the drugs. But that don't matter. Um, then we go back. We go to the Voltex party. We try to. Then we go to try to kill Nathan. I love that. Cause I was like, I was like, yeah, I can't. I'm hoping. I want to know how this turns out. Are we gonna kill Nathan? And also, oh yeah, back to the Chloe thing. That made me upset that Chloe got to kill Frank and I didn't get to kill Frank. That was upsetting to me. Like, you, you created an entire continuity error just to prevent me from killing Frank. You created an entire continuity error just from, like, a, not a continuity error, an entire plot hole to where two bullets just magically disappear and or Chloe's so stupid that she didn't put six rounds into a six-round revolver. The six chamber, I don't know, yeah, whatever. Um, that Chloe, or that Chloe was that stupid, one or the other, which I, at that time Chloe wasn't acting that stupid, so I'm calling it a plot hole that I can't kill Frank and then Chloe gets to kill Frank or whatever alright so we're in there and we're doing that and that party is dumb it's really stupid it's like uh, but you know at least I like talking to the people inside that party it was a lot of fun uh, but after that party we then basically get a text from he ending, okay we might as well talk about the ending since we're at it right now um, it is physically impossible the ending happened the way it did Unless, which at least it's more reasonable now, that the two main characters, that, that Chloe and Max are that stupid that they didn't notice any of the signs. But it is physically impossible that the professor left the school after them, followed them in their car, left the school after them, followed them in their car, in his car, whatever he's driving, and then still had the ability to stab Max with the drug in the time frame that he stabbed her with the drug. It's physically... It's just impossible. Like, you would have noticed something. Like, an average human being would have noticed something. Not even a hyper-intelligent... Not even, like, someone who's a tracker or anything like... No, someone... An average human being that's not brain-dead would have noticed this. Much less a photographer, someone who's supposed to, you know, be, you know, visually focusing on stuff. You know, visually observant of things. But, um, so, like, so he... So they get the text message, and then they leave. And they basically, they they just leave. And the guy was still up on stage when he was doing his talking stuff, so... Like, it's... I think it's um, irreasonable. I think it's it's irrational to think that the professor left the school before Chloe did. Chloe and Max did. I think that's... I think that's not reasonable. I think that's highly... um, I think that's not reasonable at all, to think that. Um... Maybe he drove without his headlights on, and he followed, and he was close enough. But even then, that seems a bit off. That it seems like Chloe is not the person, at least when she knows her friend is dead, and that, quote unquote, Nathan is destroying the evidence. Um, that she would, you know, adhere to speed limits because she didn't adhere to speed limits the first time around. I don't think she did adhere to speed limits the second time around. So. Basically, he's got to follow her. He has to follow her going bang, about the same speed, but far enough back that they don't notice that they end with his headlights off. And then, while we're walking around the graveyard directly to the same spot, he has to sprint without a light on through the graveyard, or the junkyard, sprint through the junkyard around without a light on, because with a light we would have been able to see it, and then make his way next to, like, next to, like he would have been sitting there waiting for them to come. Because the time frame for this, it, it's just impossible. I don't see I don't see how it could rationally happen unless the guy himself has time powers too. Maybe I don't know. He might. You never know. This game, 
this game kind of throws stuff willy-nilly at stuff. I wouldn't have believed that for the first two episodes, but I sure do believe it for the, this one. Like maybe episode five, everyone's got time travel powers. No one, and, and everyone just believes that no one else knows. Whatever. Um, uh, but no, yeah, this is gonna end with this is gonna end with like Earth Jesus congratulating Max for saving a day or something stupid like that. Yeah. Um. So that's that's it. But and when basically and like yeah, so Max gets stabbed in the neck, and that's also something that I found kind of funny. Like, I know this is probably a high powerful drug. It's like a really hard drug. And I know stabbing you in the neck will increase the effectiveness of the drug because it's basically going to shoot right into your brain. But she got stabbed in her neck, and then instantaneously she tried to rewind time, which is something I was like, wow. I mean, I'm, from up till now, that's not something Max would have done because this whole, this whole episode would have been. Is, the whole, whole episode is stupid in that kind of regard. Like, every, every character is dumber for some reason. So she instantaneously tries to rewind time, and she can't because of the drug. And I'm not sure why. It, you'd think that that drug would take at least enough. Like maybe if like she was trying to rewind time, and like it wound, like she wound enough. Like maybe like like I think I think the, the best way to set this up would have been the fact that she could rewind time enough, but the fact that the drug, since it's inside her body at this point, still affects her. So basically, she gets stabbed in the neck. She, they rewind time. She rewinds time, and then she passes out because she's she got hit with this drug. She's laying on the ground, and then like Chloe's gone, but like so Chloe doesn't notice that Max is gone, and she sees, and she walks up and she sees Chloe in front of her, and so she kind of sprints off to Chloe, and then she gets shot in the head with by the guy. And then then we have to, but then again that adds another element to where the one guy now knows that Max can time travel, but whatever or something like that. Who knows? Um, who knows? But like, it just it would have made sense otherwise, because like it seemed like that the drug reacted incredibly fast. Like whenever they put like truth serums in people's necks, like in spy movies, like that might be fast. I don't know. I don't know the actual technical things to it. But like in the spy movie, it was like in like in the last not the last the la, not, in True Lies, in True Lies. Uh, in True Lies, it takes like, well, like two minutes, three minutes, for the for the drug to start taking effect. Like it takes it takes a bit of time. Like it is, isn't instantaneous where he's like, oh, I better tell the government secrets right now. So it's like it, you'd think that this would not. You'd think it it would take a little bit. Like it wouldn't be some instantaneous thing. It's not like she they put chloroform on her face. But I don't know. Maybe who? Oh, maybe I don't know. But yeah, so but like that, like and when the when they first revealed it, I thought it was gonna be like his dad, like maybe his dad is, you know, in the you know killing business and like wanted to murder, you know, in the killing and raping business, um, and basically he's kind of just forcing his son to go along with it or maybe something like that. Uh, but no, it was the teacher, which that shocked me. That really, I'm like, oh wow, again, it's. I have to. I'd have to say people who predicted this. Um, I would have to probably say you're lying. Maybe you did. Maybe I'm missing some subtext. But from the two quote, from the massive clue that we quote unquote got, it, that's undermined by the fact that one, rich people still have rich people stuff. Like, I mean, I, I shouldn't. It's so redundant, but that's what it is. Rich people have rich people stuff. And then, um, and then. Like with it being physically impossible that the teacher made it there in the time frame that he made it there, the, the it just it's impossible. I think it's I think it's I think I'd argue it is impossible to predict that it was in fact the teacher, but not for the good reasons, but for bad reasons, or well, whatever. But yeah, so the the actual yeah so for, like I played this I played this episode and it it bothered me throughout the entire thing. It bothered me when she said she didn't know, which it's like when she didn't know why Nathan was raping and killing women. It's like it, we do know why because he likes raping and killing women. We found the bond. We found the uh, the binders. You know, it was it made me upset that they didn't explore at all the um this alternate reality, which could have worked. Like Chloe is stuck. Like you can't have you know yeah. Like when they showed when they sh like when they showed the preview of um the fourth episode and the, and the at the end of the third episode. Max was by herself, and it made sense because guess what? Chloe was stuck in a bed. Now the reason why she was by herself was because Max... I mean, the reason why Max was by herself was because Chloe got upset and ran ahead and somehow got in 
to the same place that she got into. Whatever. Oh man. Um. Um. I don't know. But this, like I said, this did rejuvenate. Like I did, because it's. Hopefully, what I'm what I'm trying to say is because this seemed, the narrative has seemed like it's written in its written in a way that it's planned, and I mean it's I would call, I consider this backwards writing where you have plot points that you need to hit and that they want to hit, and then so they kind of etch it backwards and they kind of stitch it together like a follow the dots I can't even remember what you call those kind of you know those old drawings you'd find in those like stupid activity books but you know the follow the dots thing that's what that's kind of what it is it's backwards where you write we have these specific plot points you have to hit and if you don't hit them if you don't hit them and I've actually done this before because one time I actually had like a weird I guess I, I did this for one of my like a short story I, I guess it was supposed to be a manuscript for a manga that I was writing and I basically had a dream about it, and I dreamed about it, and all this stuff, and I basically wrote it backwards in my dream, because I of the of the dream that I was having, and so I decided I was like, oh, that was a really nice idea. I wanted to do it, so and I wrote it. I wrote it forwards, but I knew the plot points I had to hit. I just had to make sure that those that it that it constantly led up to those plot points. You just and like this is it's so willy nilly leading up to those plot points, like like the um like yeah like the ending with the guy that's not established at all. Warren being able to beat that guy up is, I mean, I guess that, that I guess that could happen, but Warren kind of got the crap kicked out of him all the time. So it, it, like, it doesn't really make sense, and that's a plot point. That's where one of the decisions are. And it seems like every one of the decisions... So, yeah, so, like, the argument that, that people like to bring up is the fact that, like, because in, in The Walking Dead, your decisions don't matter because they really don't matter. Um, and in this one, they do, well... Well, they used to not do. At the end of episode three, they sure didn't. Your your point, your uh, the decision didn't matter. But this, yeah, they still do. But at what cost do they do they matter? Because narratively, they they're not cohesive. Narratively, they kind of are awkward and they don't fit. At least with I would disagree because at least everything else led up in in episode three. Up till the end of episode three, I think that I felt like every all the decisions did lead up to stuff, except for the plant thing, which that was stupid, that your plant died because you watered it too much. Like, yeah, yes, plants do die if you water them too much, but there's a limit, all right? There's there's a limit to what I'm willing to believe. Like, yeah, we're we're in the middle of a kind of like, well, at least in my state, in Indiana, all the cornfields around here are basically like un, not growing very well. Like, they're they're just nasty. They look bad. And it's because we had so much rain that a lot of the plants drowned. Like a lot of our in our garden, a lot of our onions didn't do well because they drowned. Like that's that's the thing. But like watering your plant with just a bottle of water a little bit every day, that's not gonna hurt that plant. Like maybe if you did it every single day constantly. But wow, I mean, whatever, it don't matter. But no, um, yeah, the, that's what it is. But yeah, the the decision seemed a bit. The decisions seem a bit weaker in the narrative because they don't hold as much weight in the narrative. Because the narrative isn't written... The decisions the decisions were made and then the narrative was written around it but lazily rather than the narrative being written and then organic decisions being being able to be pulled out of there. Like, like at least I could kind of see... No, I guess I can't see it because the whole, there's nothing being talked about Rachel and that's kind of the whole point of that. Eh, it don't matter. So, um, yeah, like I said... I think I think I said earlier in the video. I know I was planning on it. I am excited about episode five now. Um, I don't know how this is going to end. It's probably going to end pretty silly and dumb, but at least at least it was enjoyable until we hit episode four. And then again, like right now, I'm like I really want to I really want to play the fifth episode just because. I mean, hopefully. Oh yeah, I guess that's what I was talking about earlier. Hopefully we, hopefully we've got all the stupid crap like out of the way, like that middle chunk that. The fourth episode seemed such filler, and I think that's why it took an extra month to do because I think they changed and modified a lot because it just things seem a little rushed, just a little rushed in this episode. So um, that might be why it took an extra month for them to come out because they had to modify it real quick. Maybe who knows? But that's why you make a game in one sitting. That's why you do not make an episodic game, or if you do make an episodic game, you stick you stick to the original script pretty hard unless it's awful. Because you can't listen to fan, you can't listen to the fan base. 
most of the fan base are irrational. Most of the fan, boys, fan base are fanboys, and they, they don't think about the things critically. That's why a lot of people really, really like this game. I've presented, I don't know, this has got to be cl- getting close to three hours of, of, of stuff I've talked about this game. Most people don't know it. Like, I really wish I was a, like, I'm, and not even, I really wish I was a big and famous, like, not, maybe a YouTuber, or a podcaster, or a game journalist, or something, or like, even a games commentator, something like that, just because I want people to hear what I have to say. I don't care about the money or the fame or anything. I just want people to just know that there are problems with this game and the fact that they don't get it. Like, either people either hate the game irrationally or they love the game irrationally, and they don't get this middle point. They don't, they don't see it. Like, I still like, well, up to episode four, I still like the game. Um, up until episode four, I still like the game, but it's just, there are these problems, and people don't seem to notice them, and it's like, it's either you hate it because the kids are hipsters, and they, they talk like they're, like, written like dumb kids, and that's, that's not correct, or you hate, or, or people love it mindlessly, like, oh, it's so cool, like, they got so many awesome decisions, but no, um, I don't expect, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm think I'm, I'm feel like episode five, I'm predicting that episode five will actually be better than episode four, because they have gotten a lot of the middle ground done. Like, it felt like like a lot of Episode 4 would have been, could have taken place slowly over, you know, slowly over the, um, the last three episodes. Um, the Frank thing, at least the Frank thing kind of lined up, because we, and I think it was the third episode, we stole his key, we, we, in the third episode we stole his keys, we got in there, we got his journal, and then we had to go back for the cipher, which, whatever, at least, that, at least that's a thing. I mean, at least, I mean, Frank seems, that seems illogical for Frank to do that, but whatever. Um, but at least it, it, there is a logic line to that. A bit unreasonable, but logic line to it. Um, yeah. So that, at least that, that fit in there. And the David thing, I mean, not the David, but uh, maybe, is it David? I don't know. Probably not. But just Chloe's stepfather, it, it really doesn't seem... Like, at least that was, like, it was a matter of coincidence where it just, you were there, so you did it then. And, of course, you couldn't, you couldn't really get away with stealing stuff from him at that time because he was in the house and you would have gotten in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. (laughs) She got shot and killed. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, and then stealing Nathan's phone, which, you know, I guess, like, it all eventually happens, but this, like, the, the epi, the, the, the mystery aspects and the gathering of clues and evidence and stuff like that would have worked a lot better had it been spaced out throughout this. Because it's essentially we had the first episode, which is, hey, I've got time travel powers. It's cool. Oh, I met my cool friend Chloe. Hey, let's have an adventure together. I'm like, oh, serious stuff is happening. We need to do stuff. And then the second episode's about Chloe. And then and it's like them having fun. And then the third episode's about... Chloe and them having fun and then you saving Kate and then the third episode's like oh now we've got to start um, now we've got to try to find Rachel you know and it's like oh wow I mean it's like it just it felt it would have felt better if it was the mystery was a little bit better paced I think well I don't it doesn't matter like I said I'm excited it seems like they got over a bunch of the unnecessary crap in the fourth episode a bunch of the dumb decisions a bunch of that and hopefully I, I don't think it'll recover it I don't think I don't think it'll be good enough to out bad the episode four out out bad the episodes four bad but i think it'll be better and it will recover some that's my that's my prediction um maybe excluding the stupid ending because i do like some i do like stupid endings from time to time as long as it's a bit tongue-in-cheek in the how silly it is and i'm hoping that's what it goes for or i'm hoping it's just a really well in- written ending but we can't hope for that anymore uh that's that ship has sailed that ship has sailed real hard, but at least you know, I'm excited about it because it tastes. It doesn't deserve crap. I I totally missed the. I was gonna talk about the Kamada effect, but I'll do that. That's a whole other video. Um, but it tastes like the ending to episode. The ending to episode four tastes a lot like, well, the, I guess I guess more of the preview of episode five. Tastes a lot like uh, the Cat Lady. If you haven't played the Cat Lady, go play the Cat. If you haven't played the Cat Lady, go play the Cat Lady. It's amazing. Um, but um, it tastes a lot like the Cat Lady. It's not going to be as good as the Cat Lady, but hopefully it hits some of that surrealism and some of that like unnerving tension in the Cat Lady because that would be that would be very interesting. 
Because that's all about that's all about you having to go around murdering horrible, terrible people who do horrible, terrible things. And if it even hits even a fraction of the grace and eloquence of the cat lady, then this it, it'll be better. We could just pretend the fourth episode didn't happen, and overall the game would still be good in that pretense, post tense. I think it'd probably be post tense. Um, but I, I don't know. I just I'm excited. I want this. I'm hoping this game comes out in like a month because I don't want to. I don't want to be waiting. I don't want to have this come out while I got to go to school because then I got to have to manage scrap and whatever. As long as it comes out soon enough, that'll be better. But <sighs> episode four was really, really, really hard <laughs> getting through. Yeah, I, I hit that. Yeah, when, when I had to stop playing it just for it wasn't that long. It wasn't like the five days that the other one was. But I had to stop playing when she said she doesn't know why Nathan was murdering people. Uh, you, you, yeah, you do. You saw the pictures. Don't, don't do that. All right, so see you later, I guess.